Good morning and welcome to Cindy's Kitchen. We're cooking again today and it's Monday. I'd say meatless Monday, but we're adding some bacon, so there will be no meatless today. Welcome. If you're brand new, we're glad you're here. Follow us here on Facebook so that you can see us every morning at 11 o'clock, Monday through Saturday. Or if you miss it, you're on replay, put hashtag replay so we can say hello and we know that you're here. Otherwise, if you miss everything, you wanna go back and find a recipe, please go to our YouTube channel, also conveniently called Cindy's Kitchen, subscribe, and every time that we load a recipe, which is every day about one, then you'll get a ding and you'll know it's time to go and check out the new recipe. So what's cooking on Cindy's Kitchen today? Today we're doing squash. Now, there are different kinds of squash that we've already done. We have done zucchini boats, and we've done a, kind of a garlic zucchini saute. We've done yellow squash before. What pattern is my mug? Uh, Violet, I think it's called Violet Riot. Violet Riot. Bamboo toast tongs. Okay, Glenice, thank you. I'm gonna try that. Anyway, so, uh, and we've done spaghetti squash. So we've done a whole lot. So I thought today, even though yellow squash was on sale, so we're doing yellow squash, but in a different way, and we're doing butternut squash. Now, everybody and their dog who's had butternut squash had it either sweet, like with brown sugar or whatever, or they had soup. Okay, we're not doing either one of those. The spaghetti squash recipe is amazing, isn't it, Vicky? Oh, yes, so good. I like it. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and get our yellow squash going. We're going to go back and forth between the what we need to do because, you know, cooking times. So here's in a big bowl, big old bowl, right? Here's what I've done. I have taken four yellow squash. See the yellow, yellow squash? Four four yellow squash, and I diced them. And one onion. Uh, this is just a yellow onion. Diced it up. Now, that being said, and I'm gonna go ahead and season, there's no oil in here, and I'm gonna tell you why. Oh, I gotta show you. My purple pot is dirty, so we're using the orange pot. Half a stick of butter. I know, I know, half a stick of butter. Okay, for you all watching, you could use oil, of some sort, but really, I'm going with taste on this one. Half a stick of butter. It's a vegetable, right? Okay, start eating that, because we want that to melt. In our four, wait, you tell me. If you've been around with me for some time, you tell me, why, when I cook things, do I dice it? Tell me, if you've been around, why do I dice everything? Cause you know I do. Okay, you tell me. While we're doing that, I'm gonna put some salt. Okay, look, salt. I'm gonna do two of these, okay? We're gonna do pepper. I know I usually use the shaker. I use these because I thought these were so cute. Look, little square dishes. I like those. Okay, and then just for giggles, well, not giggles, we're gonna put in some cumin. Easier to eat, bite size. That's one reason. The perfect bite, I know. Oh, somebody's been paying attention. Okay, I'm gonna use about a teaspoon of roasted cumin. Perfect bite. Okay, I know I say that a lot, but there's another reason. Come on, folks. I know you guys have been paying attention. All right, I'm just gonna give this a toss. It smells like tacos already. Okay, my butter, do you hear the butter? Let's get it. Oh, the butter's melty. See? Melty and all zingy. All right, so we're not going to put it on my cutting board anymore because I learned my lesson. We're going to take our seasoned yellow squash and onions and dump that in where our butter was. Okay? La, 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 la. In. And then to that, oh, sorry. To that, we're going to add some garlic. Faster cooking time, ding, 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 Vicky. There you go, Luisanne cooks evenly, ding, ding, ding. Okay, remember when we did roasted garlic on Saturday and I put it in this? Look at that, 
That's four heads, can you see? Four heads of roasted garlic covered in oil. I know, it's a little slice of heaven. All right, I'm just gonna ditch in there and I'm gonna get four head, four head, or four cloves, not four heads. Boy, that would be some garlic, wouldn't it? Four cloves of garlic. You know, if you're not a huge garlic fan, but I mean, look, there's a lot of stuff in there. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna give this a stir just so everybody gets butter. La, la, la. Everybody gets butter. I have it on medium high. Walking away. We need that to cook. Probably mm, five to 10 minutes, okay? So the real answer, two answers always is, um, one, do I have normal size garlic or elephant? Just the normal size, what I get. Bonus is the garlic oil, I know Gail, cause then later on, even when the garlic's gone, all the oil that I put in there, the olive oil that I put in there, ooh, it's all garlicky, yay. Anyhow, so one, I want this to cook faster. I could, I could have cut it in any size I wanted to. It could have been in slices. It could have been in half moons. Heads of garlic are for good. You ought to try it. It's awesome. I use it for everything. That roasted garlic is the bomb. Anyhow, I could have cut it in any size I wanted to. The point is, we have limited time on here, and so I want it to cook faster. Here's the deal. I think a lot of you, yeah, I think a lot of you uh, for yellow squash and zucchini squash, maybe you grew up with the whole boiling thing, even with the squash casserole. The majority of the recipes say to boil it. Oh, I just, no, I don't do, boiling it to me just sucks all the flavor out of everything. So I'm not a big boil it. Okay, while that's cooking, we're gonna look at our butternut squash, shall we? How many of you have never, tell me, raise your hand, have you never cooked a butternut squash? Here's the inside. You see the inside? The inside has these little seeds. Rebecca's probably freaking out right now because she's seen something else that had seeds in it. Anyway, that being said, I did this in the wrong order. We should have, before I cut it down the middle, we should have peeled it. That would have made this whole process, peeling process easier because I would have had something larger to hold on to. That being said, we're just gonna peel my poor little hands hard on the arthritis folks. I'm doing it that way. Okay, so that's all you gotta do. Peel the outside. Let me do the other one. Look, it's raining peels. It's raining squash. Hallelujah, it's raining squash. Amen. Okay, there we go. So I'm doing this. While I peel this, I have to tell you, um, our church, um, now I'm Presbyterian, I don't think that matters a hill of beans, what denomination you are, but that being said, um, our church usually, in the spring and the fall, we offer adult classes uh, on various topics. Rebecca's on, I know, Gail, I know, she's on the road in the mobile. Um, so, and I've taught over the, I mean, over the past 13 years, I've taught a lot of classes, but you knew Philip was not going to allow me to go to the church and teach a class. And, um, so that being said, okay, now we have to take this stuff out. See that stuff? You need a back and forth peeler. I know, maybe I do. Okay, so I'm going to get a, you know what, I'm just going to get a spoon. La, da, 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 da. Squash. Hello, squashy. Okay, get a spoon, a regular spoon, a small spoon, whatever, and just, or you could use your ice cream scoop. That's much easier, you know? Or your grapefruit spoon, right? Whatever you got. I mean, you don't have to have specific tools. There we go, see? Took it out. Um, road strip, oh, road show party tonight. Look at this. Okay, so I'm just gonna take this out. Anyway, so you heard me say that this morning. Yep, I was, Rebecca was live this morning. Okay, we've cut them, we've peeled them, we've taken the seeds out. Can you eat the seeds? Well, you can, you can roast them just like you do pumpkin seeds. The difference is there's not as many seeds on a, okay, now I'm gonna cut these in long strips and I'm gonna cut them 
in smaller pieces, right? And we all know why I want them in smaller pieces. Yo! Okay. So then I'm gonna cut down. So see the size? There it is. Can you see the, the board? I hope you can see the cutting board. Sometimes if you have your comments on, the comments cover more than half of the bottom of the screen and then you can't see what I'm doing. So you can take your finger and like do one of those. Whoosh. And, um, and I won't see you do it. So I won't think you're like, move it along, Cindy. Um, and that way you can see the whole screen unless you just wanna see what everybody's saying. Cutting squash is the hardest part. And quite frankly, I'm just gonna use the same bowl I used already. <clears throat> quite frankly, I think a lot of people don't make either butternut squash or acorn squash, which we'll do for a different show, for that very reason. I mean, you can always like, look, cut it in half, and then you don't have such a long thing to get through. Um, but I think that really is it, because they're like, oh, this is hard. And it, and it kind of is, and like I said, you do need a sharp knife. Um, so that being said, I'm going back to my story. So our church always offers um, on Wednesday nights, it's kind of like family night. We used to have dinner at, from 6 to 6.30. Everybody ate together. It was very nice. And then everybody went to a class. Kids, youth, adults, all kinds of different classes. Well, you know this COVID thing has messed up everything. Good morning, Lisa. Hi, Camille. But we, will, we shall not be deterred in our learning. So I'm I was supposed to teach a class this fall on um, the disciples. and um, But you know, Philip is not letting me go to the church. And who would go to the church? I mean, I don't know how many people are gonna go anyway. So, okay, here we go. There you go. We're gonna need a little oil. Hold on, stirring. Oh my, you wanna be here for this. I'm just telling you. You don't have to use olive oil, you can just use regular oil. Cause you know, here we go. There are no labels on things. I just know that this is olive oil and this is canola oil. So there you go. Helping me relax. Oh, Shelly. I can't read the whole thing. Hold on, Shelly. Hold on. Oh, I can't do the see more thing. Oh, there we go. Oh no, you broke three toes. Oh, that's awful. Okay, we're just gonna put enough oil in there just to kind of coat them. So really, depending on how many you're making, eh, tablespoon, maybe two. We've preheated the oven to 425. 425, I tell you, salt. I know you're all impressed with me that I'm not using my ugly thing, but these little things are so cute. Look, they're square. So I put some salt in here to do, and then I also did pepper, okay? Salt and pepper, and just like the other squash, because I want my meal to be cohesive. We're gonna have some different flavors, different textures, but I want my, so I'm gonna put in some cumin, maybe a half a teaspoon, depending, again, this is a small one, but anyway. And then Saigon cinnamon, you know, it's, it's all the thing. And uh, so about a half a teaspoon of Saigon cinnamon. Give that a toss. Let me get this yucky off of that. Give that a toss. Yum! Rebecca makes fun of me because I use these big bowls all the time. It's just a convenient size for me because I do a lot of mixing. If you're baking, I know, Jennifer, don't get too excited. It was a closeout. She doesn't have any more. <laughs> Thank you, Shelly. I love my dishes too. Okay, sheet pan. See the sheet pan? Well, it's a half sheet pan, but any baking dish you have. So you say, can I use my Polish pottery? You know what? I, I'm sure it would be okay. Polish pottery is fired at like 1200 degrees or something. So I'm sure it would be okay. But we're at 425 and I never want anything to happen to my Polish pottery. So I'm just using a sheet pan. Spread it all out. See, it's oiled, it's seasoned. A lot of people will say, so you don't have to wash the bowl, to put it on here and then drizzle oil and then do that. Okay, quite frankly, if you do it that way, there are pieces that don't have stuff on them. Unless you do one of these. Ugh, ugh. So I just use the bowl. Okay, we're gonna pop this in the oven. 425 degrees for 20 minutes. Here we go. 20 minutes. Now, while that cooks, 
we have to take an eye on our squish, our squish squash. And I still have a story to tell. I'm in the middle of a story. Uh, let me get rid of this, because you don't need to do this. Okay. Uh, let me check one more thing. Okay, it's cooking. You need a pan of cornbread. I know, speaking of bacon, I made bacon chocolate chip walnut cookies last night. Yum! Okay, you're gonna need a pan of cornbread. Now, this is just, I know you're gonna roll your eyes that I didn't make homemade cornbread because how hard is it to make cornbread? Um, I just made a package of Jiffy, okay? This is like a seven inch pan, but you know, whatever you usually cook your Jiffy in, right? Okay, so then once you do that, then you need to kind of crumble it up. I'm gonna, no, I'm just gonna use the same bowl. <laughs> Good morning, Jana. It's okay that you're late. It's okay that you're late. Okay, so I'm gonna take the cornbread. I know I have to get my hands dirty. And we're gonna put this, we're gonna crumble this in the bowl. Crumble, crumble, crumble. I could have cut slices and done this, couldn't I? But I didn't. So <clears throat> this might be something fun to have with your kids, right? Or your grandkids. <coughs> it's like making meatloaf, except you're using cornbread, right? That does sound good. Chocolate bacon. Yum. Use your pie plates for cornbread. I do sometimes. Um, but the thing with the pie plate uh, and a jiffy cornbread mix is that it's very thin. And if that doesn't bother you, that's fine. Right? But I don't know. I like to use, I don't like, so my Polish pottery, I like to use all of it. Um, I just, I have fun using something different, so I don't like to use the same thing for the same purpose all the time. Hey, Sandy, good to see you. All right, so our cornbread is all mixed up. Look at that, okay? Now it's time for us to go get the squash. It's time, I tell you. Hot. Okay, look at that. Look at that. We added no water. We added no stock, nothing. There's nothing to take away from all that lovely flavor, okay? You have two options now. This thing, right? You can go through and do one of these. You don't need to mash it into oblivion, right? So you can do that or, um, and, and so again, it's okay if you have some pieces, okay? You just wanna give a little mash. Once you do this, you will realize there's really no liquid in here. It's so awesome. Okay, there you go. Now, we, to this, we're gonna add some other liquidy stuff. We're gonna add a can of diced green chilies. If you don't wanna add the diced green chilies, if this is not your cup of tea, don't add the diced green chilies. Continue on with the recipe, just don't add this. And then you need a can of cream of chicken soup, okay? Dump in, this is store-bought. Can of cream of chicken soup, we're gonna give that a stir with my Dutch batter whisk. Look how cool that is, except, mm, mm. you like to, okay, the immersion blender is good, except I don't want a puree. I do want some pieces, look at, look. I want some pieces. Uh, let me use this spoon. Okay, so look at that, can you see? You can see that some of it is smushy, but there are pieces, because you know we don't want mush casserole. We want people to look at it and know that in fact it is, that would be me, no chilies. And that's fine, Janet, certainly is. Now, um, bacon, look at that. I cheated out, okay? I have this big package that I got from Sam's that's pre-cooked bacon, lazy. So I just took uh, about eight slices. And, and chopped them up, and there we go. This is, I'm gonna use half, because I'm gonna use half for the other side, okay? So there we go, bacon in there, and because, and because I'm using cheese. This is a Mexican blend cheese. Why am I using a Mexican blend? Because I just put cumin in here, and I put green chilies. If you don't wanna add cheese to this, you certainly don't. About a half a cup. You can use a whole cup if you want to. Again, wholly up to you. And then this whole pan of cornbread. Uh, so you say, how much of, is that? 
I would say it's about two cups. A Jiffy, a Jiffy corn box, the little, um, is about two cups of, um, of uh, crumbs, if you will, okay? So, um, you know, here's the little Jiffy, if you wanna know how to make it. And you know, it's an egg and a third of a cup of milk. And you know, it takes no time. So there you go. All right, so we're stirring, we're stirring. Oh, yum. Now, here's the other thing that you can do if you so desire. Oh, it looks so good. It looks so good. But if you want just a little extra, yaw, yeah. if you have some green onions, these are kind of going bad. Look how wussy they are. But it's okay, because they're going in a casserole, right? So I'm just gonna, wait. I'm just gonna chop these up. And I just had two. So, it really is, I know. I, I really think, like I said, people look at butternut squash and say, oh, there you go. And when I was talking to Rebecca the other day, she was talking about how they had always boiled squash. And I was like, ooh, or no, boiled corn. And, and I was like, wow, there are so many different ways to make all the vegetables. And we kind of get stuck in a, in a rut of making everything the same way, which, you know, okay. All right, so I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use this one. This is a big square. Uh, and it is, let me see, I have my ruler. Ooh, get my ruler. It is uh, 10 inches, no, 10 and a half inches across. Um, you can use uh, your casserole dish if you so desire, okay? I know I'm holding this, the back side to you. I should do it this way. But you know, Cindy's hands are not working well together. Okay. The arthritis. Arthur is a pain in my hand. Arthur's itis. Okay. Ta and da. You could, if you wanted, put another little sprinkling of cheese on top of this. If you thought that would make late to the party. Joan, it's okay. Beth, it's okay. Uh, you can revive wimpy green onions. Yes, by soaking them in water. I know, but it was going in a casserole, so it doesn't bother me if they're a little wussy. Okay, look at that. Now I'm gonna stick this in the oven. Why? It's all cooked, but what I want is I don't want to taste cornbread. I want the cornbread to soak up this, the, um, the yumminess of the squash. And then we've got the cheese that's seeping in there. We've got cumin, we had a little cinnamon, we have, I mean, just there's flavors, layer upon layer, the onions. So we're gonna put that in the oven and all we're really looking for is kind of a nice brown toasty top. So 350 degrees for about 30 minutes, okay? In we go, oh. Okay, that being said, while we wait on our roasted squash, I have to tell you, I have to show you one other thing. I know, I still never finished my other story, but I promise I'll come back. Here's the other thing. We're gonna have a mid-cooking show break. I know, I don't sell Polish pottery. I don't have a business. I'm not associated. I'm not getting paid for this, okay? That being said, um, I wanted to say some of you are new and, uh, and you're looking at patterns and you're like, oh, she doesn't have enough or she doesn't have everything in the pattern that I want. So what I wanted to show you was three examples of things how you can mix and match where they're complementary. So you saw the bowl that I had, right? And that one is called Bluebell. So I'll show you the plate. Here's Bluebell. Well, so you want another set, but there isn't another set. If you get Crimson Bell, look at that. Look how pretty those are together. They almost match perfectly. They're just different colors. So that's an awesome thing to do if you're trying to mix and match. Bluebell and Crimson Bell, okay? So that's one example. The second example is, now you, you may have seen her show this. She kind of brought this one back. This is called Peach Spring Daisy, right? And it's beautiful with the vibrant peach colors, but let's say she doesn't have enough because she just brought it back. The Blue Spring Daisy, look at that. It's almost the same. You've just gone from the peach to the blue, but they both have the yellow in there and they complement each other really well. So you're setting a really pretty table by mixing and matching those two. And the last one I'm gonna show you is kind of a weird thing and you're going, does it match? But I love maraschino and I think Bess is the one 
I can't remember if it's best is the one that loves maraschino as well. Anyway, somebody does. But I love maraschino, and for the longest time, I couldn't figure out what to pair with this. And it's not an exact match, but what I found is the Violet Riot kind of does. I mean, it's a little bigger. Look, the maraschino is smaller flowers, and the Violet Riot are bigger ones. But especially if you have the two bowls next to each other, look how pretty. Because the, the flowers are a little bigger on the bowl. Pretty, huh? Okay. I just thought that I would, you know, public service announcement if you're trying, if you're just starting out in Polish pottery. There we go. Uh, 350 just for about five minutes. Really, again, we just want all the flavors to marry together. Um, and and I, I don't like to cook the bacon on the sheet with the butternut squash because there's too much bacon juice. You know, we don't offend our bacon by saying bacon oil or bacon grease because that's very offensive. I love the whisk, Danish batter whisk that Joanne got me. I love this. It's great because not only can you use it as a whisk, you can use it to stir things and it kind of like gently lifts. Um, you can actually lift with stuff and it gets the stuff on the side. Yes, this is becoming, this is quickly becoming my favorite utensil. Danish batter whisk. Love it. Anyway, um, okay, uh, let me see what else. Oh, so let me tell you, finish telling you a story um, about the class. And so I'm not gonna go in and I don't know really how to use YouTube Live and our senior pastors gonna probably do that. So I'm gonna teach a class and it's called uh, The Chosen Class of 12 Plus One, because it's the disciples, you know, and then we had one more. So anyway. The Chosen Class of 12 plus one, and it's gonna be the life and time uh, uh, times of the disciples. So we're gonna kind of dig in on what kind of people they were, not just, you know, where they are. And um, I'm gonna do a Facebook Live. Now, obviously it won't be on Cindy's Kitchen, it'll be on our church website. Um, but I thought if it was something that you were interested in, um, we don't start till after Labor Day, I'm pretty sure. And so I'll say something about it again. But if, you're, if that's something that you'd be interested in, we're going to do it at 6.30 on Wednesday nights. Um, oh, that's going to run into Rebecca. Eek. Okay. Maybe I shouldn't advertise that. Sorry. <laughs> we're, uh, I don't know how we can do Facebook Live and watch Rebecca on Facebook Live. Okay, scratch that. I don't want to do that. Anyway. <clears throat> okay. We're going to go ahead and take out the... Um, I'm not gonna take out the squash casserole because I still want that to cook uh, and I want it to brown. It is gonna be a great class. It is, we're gonna have a lot of fun. I'm kind of goofy. Oh, really, Cindy? I am kind of goofy when I teach classes. Um, Cheryl's in here and I think Cheryl has, has heard me uh, do things like at women's retreats and things like that. Two iPads, there you go. Janet has taken my classes and it's kind of wild. I don't know how a Facebook Live class is gonna be um, because I kind of pick on people and we have phones and you know, so we'll see how it goes. We'll see. All right, let me see what I got because I want to show you something before you leave. Hold on. Okay, it's not all the way 